everybody. We're here today with Liddy Clark. How are you, girl? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's been a few months since we've seen each other. We went out for dinner a while back and had a great visit and lots of laughs. Always. You've been one busy girl since then. Oh, yes. Always. You are out on the road performing. You're opening for some amazing people. And you have a new single out. I so do. let's kind of talk about everything. And let's talk about the single first, Painted by Numbers. Yes, so that just came out on Friday, which is uh, two days ago. I don't know, is it Tuesday? Today is Tuesday, Today yes. Is Tuesday. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. Honestly, everything's just moving so fast. Welcome to my world. Yeah, so I'm guessing that's about three or four days ago. I'm not very good at math either. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just released that. And the lyric video has been out for a while. It's got a lot of views on YouTube, and I'm so excited about that. And we've gotten a few air airplay on that like a little bit on Radio Disney and Radio Disney Country and that's been so exciting to have them support us and it's really been just such an amazing experience you know traveling all over the country I've gone from the west coast to the east coast to the north and the south and absolutely it's yeah it's just starting so talk just about the songwriting excited. aspect because you wrote the song and tell everybody kind of where the song came from and what your thoughts were behind it because there may be different perceptions about what the song might be about. Yeah, so um, I wrote this song about two years ago when I was like 15, 16 years old and uh, I wasn't feeling very good about myself. I had a lot of doubts and insecurities like most teenage girls do, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to write a song that made me feel better about myself and made others feel better about themselves because I know that other people go through that and when you're going through that it feels like you're kind of the only one in this world that mm -hmm. feels that way and everyone else feels like, oh, I'm perfect, you know? But it's not really that way. Everybody has their flaws. Everyone has their insecurities. Like, I mean, Hannah Montana says, nobody's perfect. Yep. That's my little line. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just, I wanted to write a song that made everybody feel loved because everyone deserves to be loved and everyone deserves to be respected as, as a human being. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just life. Where'd you get the title from? Okay, so I went into the writing room with two other co-writers, and I had most of the song already done, but I did not have a title yet, which is the weird part. But then uh, one of my other co-writers actually came up, up with it, and it was painting by numbers at first. And so I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And so we went along with that at first, but then my dad asked me later, and he was like, is it painting or painted? I was like, ooh, painted might be a better version of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Because painted by numbers can kind of signify, you know, you know, painting by numbers where it's like painting by numbers in like the little children's right. books where it's like one, two, three. And, right. Know. But also painted by numbers as in you are not the numbers that society tells you you are. You are exactly. not defined by your age, your weight, your height, your grades, anything. So... Right, just exactly. And that's what I was trying to get out of you. I was trying to trying to get that so that people understood that, that yes. we're not classified and that we're all unique and a number doesn't mean anything. So yes, it, it's a very cool concept that you came up you with that. Your passions, you are who you love. You are not these numbers that society tells you you are. Absolutely. So talk about, as you've been out doing these tours and talking to your fans and doing meet and greets, what stories have you heard that have associated with that song? Yeah, okay, so this has actually just started, so I haven't gotten that many stories yet, but I've heard from a lot of fans on Facebook and Twitter and all of that that mm -hmm. it's helped them a lot with their self-confidence and feeling better about themselves, and they've started learning to accept themselves, you know, because they've realized, you know, I'm not painted by numbers, mm -hmm. I am not defined by these numbers that society tells me that I am. And it's, it's just nice because it took me a while to realize that when I was 16. And now just looking back on that, it's, it's a good feeling. Absolutely. Well, I know you've had some pretty big names that you've been opening for and some venues that you've been at. Talk about who, who you're working with, who you're getting to share stage right. with and on the playbill with. So Yeah, well, next weekend I'm actually opening for Craig Campbell, and I'm really excited about that. That's at the Meyer Amphitheater, so that's pretty big. Yeah. And uh, I just opened up for, uh, gosh... Uh, I was with uh, Chris Stapleton at his VIP tent show, and then uh, I also opened up for Jake Owen at a charity event in uh, a few months ago. I don't even know anymore. But um, I also opened up for Scotty McCreary, uh, Chase Bryant, <laughs> Joe Nichols, and a few other names. I probably can't remember all of them now, but honestly, just meeting all these different people and just seeing how nice they are to their fans, it's really inspiring. 
So when you're done with your set, do you stand side stage and just take it all in and try and learn from them? Yeah. It's What's really nice. Can I, can I talk about your, your thought process a little bit? I mean, I know it's still overwhelming and it's kind of new, even though you've been doing this for a while, but I know other artists have always said, you know, that when they stay on side stage, they always learn tricks and they learn so much. What are some things that you've kind of picked up on that, that you've now implemented into what you do when you're on the stage performing? Well, I didn't actually open up for him, but uh, I saw a show a few years back with Sam Hunt before he got huge, you know, and it was a free show at, like, this Bass Pro Shops, and literally there were only, like, 20 people there, and he cut his show short because there weren't enough people there, and I just remember getting to meet him afterwards, and he was just so nice and so down to earth, and he was just talking, and he was like, I don't know if I'm doing this whole famous thing right, and I was just like, yes, dude, you're doing great, <laughs> and just uh, talking to fans and being so, like, down to earth and humble and truthful, I think that's one of the most important things I've taken away from that. Yeah. And seeing Sam Hunt become so huge, I'm just like, yes. Yeah. You do to that. see him start and then to see him yes. grow, it, it is awesome. Insanely talented. Yeah. Talk about your growth. I mean, I know you've been doing this since you've been a little girl and you're still young. You're not an old, old woman by any means. So, <laughs> um, but talk about um, how social media has helped you grow and things that you've kind of learned with, with all of that. Yeah. So, uh, I've been on social media since I was like, 12 or something, you know, and all of our parents let us get on social media. And uh, that's around the time when I started my Facebook page when I was doing like my singer songwriter stuff. And I've been building up my fan page for, I guess, six years now, if I do the math correctly. And it's just weird to think about that because it's grown so much and I've learned so many cool new tricks about interacting with fans and getting to meet so many cool new people. And I've developed relationships with people online. and. Here, I actually have a funny story because this one girl asked me to, uh, she was, she had been a longtime fan of mine and uh, she lived in Oregon and she wanted me to play a prom of hers, like her senior prom. And so I went and I flew out there and that was one of the most amazing trips I had ever taken. And they had this whole poster up there that said, welcome Liddy Clark and I still have it hanging in my room. And it just, uh, And that's something that's gonna stick with her yeah. forever. It's just so amazing getting to meet fans from online, in person, and then getting to play those shows and getting to really get those interactions. Absolutely. What do you look forward to the most when you do, whether it's an in-person meet and greet or when you're talking to people online on social media? Do you like their personal stories or what inspires you when you, when you get to meet them? Definitely the personal stories. I really like the emotional connection, you know? Like, either when it's a meet and greet or if it's just on stage and you just lock eyes with somebody and you can tell that they really connect with the song and mm -hmm. that's definitely my favorite part of this whole thing. Talk about a little bit about the Radio Disney part. Yes. Um, a lot of people don't know how you got into that and, and you know what all you do with that so talk about that. Well Radio Disney is one of my favorite stations. It's been one of my favorite stations since like I was a little kid. I've been listening to it forever and I mean, we got to meet with them a few months back and they were really interested in the song and so they let me play their uh, CMA stage for CMA Fest and that was amazing. Oh my gosh. It was the first actual like official lineup that I had been on so I got to walk around Nashville and see like my name on the lineup, you know, and all the little poster boards and I took like selfies with it. It was really cool. And uh, yeah, so I got to do that and I got to play for people. I got to meet a bunch of new fans and I got to take videos up there. And, it was amazing, and now they're playing the song on the radio, which is so cool, and they actually played it on just the regular Radio Disney station, too, like on XM Radio, and I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> so, that being said, where were you the first time that you heard it on the radio? Painted by Numbers? I've actually heard another song on the radio that was mine before, but that was a few years back. Yeah, where, where were you when you heard Painted by Numbers? Okay, so think about this because <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was in my house and I'm pretty sure I Facebook live to this because they had told us they were gonna play it at like certain times of the day like around 6 p.m. or 8 p.m. or something like that and so like we were just kind of sitting there just waiting and had it on my dad's iPad and we were just kind of chilling and then once it finally came on I got my phone out and I went on Facebook live and I'm like yo look at this <laughs> It's on, it's on. Yeah. Well, talk about the radio tour a little bit, because I know you have been very busy out on the road, promoting it, visiting a lot of radio stations, and then playing some stuff along the way. 
what has been one of the craziest things that maybe a radio person has asked you to do while on the air? Oh gosh, they haven't asked me to do anything crazy. Oh, they will. <laughs> Not yet. They haven't tricked me into doing anything crazy yet. They've all been super nice, honestly. I love the radio people. They were playing my songs. So, so what's been the funnest thing about going in the studio oh. and... and have you done the weather? Have you done any prank calls? Anything like that? I have not that? done the prank calls yet. I <laughs> want to do that, though. That sounds like fun. But, um, oh gosh, I haven't really done anything. Well, like now that we've opened up the floodgates, now people yeah. will be thinking about it. So watch out. Yeah. So I've gone in the studio and like played my song before, but I haven't done any prank calls. They will. They will. Thank you for suggesting that. <laughs> well, Lydia, it's always fun talking to you. And Thank I know you. we're looking forward to a lot more new music from you. Thanks. And everybody wants to see you come and sing live on their stages. So thanks for stopping and talking with us today. And we'll talk again soon. Thank you. You're very welcome.